Brothers and sisters in Islam, if you were approached by someone who owns one of the major banks, and you were told you have an opportunity of entering into the safe of the bank for a few hours and you will be free to collect whatever amount of money or gold you can and bring it out for a few hours. Or you'll be given a couple of days to do the same thing. But there will be some people obstructing your way, trying to distract you from your mission. Whichever of the two choices you will pick, you will work like a mad person trying to collect and accumulate as much gold and money you can during the period you're allowed to. The end result will be gold and money. But the opportunity I am going to talk about today results in something that cannot be compared to anything in this life. The opportunity I am talking about today, the least that you will get is 10 multiples of all that exists in this life. Jannah. The path to Jannah is the opportunity we're talking about today. And duration, the duration, the time you're given is not a few hours or a couple of days. You have 10 full days to collect as much as you can. Depends on how keen you are. And what level of that Jannah you want. You want to take the minimum. You want to actually utilize this opportunity to start with. Or you want to pass on it. And if you don't pass, how much of it do you really want? It's a trade with Allah that is never a loss. Dealing with Allah Azza wa Jal, it's always a gain. It's always profitable when you deal with Allah the Almighty. Al-Bukhari reported that the Prophet wasallam said, there are absolutely no days during which performing good deeds is dearer to Allah Azza wa Jal, is more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal than these 10 days. Referring to the, ten, the first 10 days of Dhul-Hijjah which started today. So the companions, as keen as they were, radiallahu anhum, to be at the top, do the best, not settle for anything, minimum or mediocre. No, they wanted the top all the time. They said, and I could just see the expression on their faces, قالوا يا رسول الله ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله not even performing jihad for the sake of Allah they knew the rank of jihad and the reward of jihad and that it is the best anyone can do as the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم told them they said not even performing jihad outside these 10 days he said not even jihad And then he gave an exception. He said, except for one case. A man who goes out sacrificing his life and his wealth. He's going, willing to give up his life and taking his wealth with him. And does not return with either of it. Meaning he gets martyred and his wealth is spent for the sake of Allah. This is the only exception that will make it better than performing good deeds during the 10 days of the hijjah The mass majority of the scholars of this ummah, 
hold the opinion that these 10 days are better than the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, the Arabic text says, Ma min ayyam. Ma is a term used to express something that is very general, not limited to anything. It has no boundaries. They call it Siyahul Umum. And because of another narration that is reported by Al Bazzar, Rahmatullah Ali, classified as authentic by Al Albani. He said, Afdalu ayyam dunya, the best days in the world. Ayyamul Ashr, the 10 days meaning the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Al-Qastalani, Rahmatullah Ali, quoted Ibn Rajab to have said the following. He said, Ibn Rajab that is, some people claim that the last 10 days of Ramadan are better, more virtuous than the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah because of Laylatul Qadr and this is very far-fetched. He said, indeed, the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are more rewarding, better, and more virtuous than the last 10 nights of Ramadan. He also said, Ibn Rajab, he said, Allah Azza wa Jal made this season, the season of the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, a joint season between those who go to Hajj and those who do not go to Hajj. Now the reward of Hajj is known. He said Allah Azza wa Jal enabled those who were unable to go to Hajj for whatever reason to perform deeds even when they're at their homes and be rewarded higher than the reward of jihad as per the text of the prophet there are some deeds that are special for the first 10 days of the hijjah in addition to their general reward there is special mention made for the first 10 days of the hijjah for example, takbir. This is a deserted act of worship. People don't do it anymore. Uttering Allahu Akbar in different forms or using different phrases to utter it because it's been reported to have been uh, uttered or recited by the companions in different ways. People don't do that. Abu Hurairah, and Abdullah ibn Umar, and this is reported by Al-Bukhari. Whenever these 10 days started, he used to go out to the market and recite takbir aloud amongst the people. So people would hear them and people would start uttering takbir. One of the forms is Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. Like the ones we say, on the day of Eid, right? Some others said, Allahu Akbar, Kabira, and so on and so forth. But the idea is to utter takbir day and night during the first 10 uh, days of Ramadan, uh, of, the, uh, of the Hijjah, rather. Astaghfirullah. Another act of worship is Siyam. Al Bukhari reports. That the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever fasts a single day for the sake of Allah, optional, not Ramadan, not a vow, not making up Ramadan, not an expiation of something, just an optional fast. Because one might argue, well, these are mandatory. We're not talking about that. We're talking about an optional fast. He said, anyone who fasts a single day, Allah Azza wa Jal will keep his face 70 years far away from the fire of hell. 
70 years. There are too many texts in the Sunnah that address the reward of fasting. And it can't be listed in a khutbah. But the particular text that talks about the 10 days of the Hijjah is pertaining to the day of Arafah, which is the ninth of the Hijjah. The Prophet ﷺ was asked, and this is reported by Muslim and others, was asked about fasting the day of Arafah. The reward of fasting the day of Arafah. He said, it expiates the year before it and the year after it. Two complete years. Is the reward of fasting a single day? Well, actually, it's not a day. We're talking about some hours. Look at the generous generosity of Allah Azza wa Look how facilitated Jannah is made to us. Look how easy Allah Azza wa paved the way to reach His pleasure and His reward and His mercy and His pardon and His forgiveness. It's facilitated. It just needs us to start. Take initiative. And once you do, you'll find the support from Allah Azza wa Jal making it even easier than what you expect. Another act of worship that has special text that is pertaining to the days of the Hijjah in addition to the general texts is Dhikrullah, mentioning Allah Azza wa Jal. Keeping your tongue busy with the mention of Allah Azza wa Jal. In the book of uh, Imam Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reports that Allah said, it's a Qudusi hadith, about dhikr. He said, if my slave mentions me to himself, I will mention him, him to myself. And if he mentions me in an assembly, in a gathering, I will mention him in an assembly better than that of his. Ibn al-Qayyim commenting on this, he said, if there is nothing, if there is no reward other than Allah Azza wa Jal mentioning the slave either to himself or in the assembly of the angels, then it would be enough honor for a person to be motivated to mention Allah Azza wa Jal. But in addition to this, the Prophet ﷺ told us something particularly related to Dhul Hijjah. And Imam Ahmad mentioned, reported in his Musnad, and it was classified as authentic by Ahmad Shakir. He said, there are no days greater than the 10 days. And there are no days during which acts of worship are more beloved to Allah than the 10 days. So abundantly recite Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, alhamdulillah. فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ مِنَ التَّكْبِيرِ وَالتَّهْلِيلِ وَالتَّحْمِيدِ Abundantly recite Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, alhamdulillah, during these ten, nights, uh, t- ten days and nights, of course. Because as the scholar said, وَالْلَيَالِ تَبَعٌ لِلْأَيَّامِ The nights are part of the entire 24 hour of the day. So they're attached. So you do it here and you do it there. Sadaqah, spending in charity. Pertaining to dunya, reported by Muslim. This narration is reported by Muslim. And this is a worldly gain. The Prophet ﷺ said, ما نقصت صدقة من مال. Charity will not decrease your wealth. Meaning, it will only put barakah and increase it. Pertaining to the hereafter, 
This is reported by a Tirmidhi classified as authentic by Albani. The Prophet said, Spending charity extinguishes sin like water extinguishes fire. The significance of using the word extinguishes sin, as the scholars said, they said the Prophet ﷺ used the result of the sin, which is fire, to express himself. So, charity will extinguish the result of the sin, which is the fire, just like water extinguishes fire. Shaykh al Uthaymeen, when talking about the first 10 days of the Hijjah, when he was asked about which of the two is more rewarding, 10 nights of Ramadan or 10 days of the Hijjah, he said, it is the first 10 days of the Hijjah. And then he said, he said, it is very astonishing, very amazing to see people striving extremely hard during the last 10 nights of Ramadan. As compared to how indifferent they are, how likely they take the first 10 days of the Hijjah. He said, you hardly see a difference in their practice between all other days and the first 10 days of the Hijjah. They're the same. For them, the first 10 days of the Hijjah is just like the last 10 days of the Qidah, and they're all equal. But when it comes to the last 10 nights of Ramadan, People are alert. They hardly sleep. They don't stop. They diversify the acts of worship. They go left, right, and center doing anything to please Allah. Though the first 10 days of the Hijjah are more rewarding. He said, so if someone was to pray two rak'ahs during the last 10 days or nights of Ramadan, he said, this is less in reward than performing them during the first 10 days of the Hijjah. If you spend during the 10 days of the Hijjah, it is higher in reward than spending in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. The practice of our Salaf reflected their understanding of that. That this is more rewarding than any other day or night. Sayyid ibn Jubair. People describe him. When the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah started, he would exert so much effort that no one, no one can come close to competing with him in acts of worship. And he used to say to people, don't turn off your lights at night during the first 10 days of the Hijjah. Meaning, don't sleep. Brothers, sisters, during Ramadan and, and especially during the last 10 days or nights of Ramadan, we recited the Quran a lot. If you recited the Quran once during Ramadan or during the last 10 nights of Ramadan, do it twice during the 10 days of the Hijjah. Alhamdulillah, it just started. So no one can claim, oh, a few days have already passed. Today is the first. If you spent a thousand during the last 10, 10 nights of Ramadan or during Ramadan, spend two and three during the Hijjah. If you used to sit after the Fajr prayer for men, in the masjid until the sun and until sunrise to perform two rakahs to get the reward of Hajj and Umrah as reported by a Tirmidhi and classified as sound by Al Albani, then do that now. It's more rewarding. The reward is multiplied. There are narrations attributed to Ibn Abbas that the reward during these ten days is seven hundred multiples of any other day. Two important points I conclude with, brothers and sisters. The objective of the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah is not just to get this reward. No. We're mistaken if we think so. 
The objective of these 10 days is to utilize them to change our lifestyle. To make a serious change in our lifestyle. To try to make the entire year the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Now that is when mission is accomplished. That is when we succeed in achieving our goal. Is when we make it a period to work on changing our lifestyles. Enhance it, improve it, change our characters to the better. And finally, remember, we're talking about only 10 days, not 30 like Ramadan. So the period is shorter. And also remember that during Ramadan, devils are chained in the, the 10 days of the Hijjah. They are not. So we need to work harder. We cannot afford being lazy or postponing because time does not help us. It's a short period and we need to take advantage of this golden opportunity because it's an opportunity. And it's very possible that we don't live to see another one. How many people died since last Hajj? Many. More than we think. How many loved ones, how many friends died? A lot. So they are deprived of this opportunity. So let us not deprive ourselves from the benefit of this opportunity.